Hello everyone. Welcome to Gene Key or Gate 45. Before I start, uh, just letting you know that there's some more um, free accessibility to me coming up through, um, there's a guided visualization all around boundaries. I'll put the link below. You can download that. Um, it was channeled through me and my partner created the music. It's very, it has you really focus and go within. So I hope you like it. I am also putting together a workshop with my guides, the Fae, and you can get on the wait list or the getting notified list on my website below. So I will link both of those below for you. All right, let's dive into Gene Key 5. And we'll start on the human design side and then we'll move to the Gene Keys. So in human design, Gate 45 is in the throat and it goes to the will center through gate 21. This is the tribal circuit known as the ego or the economic circuit. And this channel is known as the money line. And it's all about equally sharing resources for the benefit of all through the cultivation and embodiment of your own authentic value while also valuing others for their authenticity. In quantum human design language, this is the gate of distribution. And in traditional human design language, this is known as the king or the queen. In the I Ching, this is known as collecting archetype. And the image of it is the lake above and the earth below. And this is a representation of the human and the divine. So the human below and the divine. And it is about people coming together. This transit, or if this is available to you in your profile or you feel called to this gate, this is all about learning to manage your resources so they benefit the greatest number of people. And resources, we often in our world think of resources as money and food. But resources are also knowledge, information, caring, love, shelter. And this transit or this gate is really highlighting the calling to share these resources for the greater good of all. On the shadow side of this, we have, it's rooted in lack or a showing off. There's sometimes an overcompensation for a lack of self-worth and, or a fear of not being seen as a leader. And so there's an overcompensation through control. On the full expression of this, we find the ability to understand and embody, not only understand, but really embody that natural leadership comes with it teacher energy. If you are a natural leader, if you have stepped into a leadership position, you are, there is an element of teacher energy associated with it that is rooted in sharing your knowledge your care, and your material resources. And this is about using the knowledge and the resources to help and sustain others so they can build their own abundant foundation from a place of authenticity. And this is so important right now because I think I've been sitting with this a lot myself and I think there's this Well, our world's been built on forcing resources and this competition, right? Who's better than people going without? And what I love about human design and the gene keys is that it speaks these two systems, these two transmissions speak to that you become more prosperous, more abundant, the more relentlessly authentic that you are. And so just 
you stepping in to practicing being more relentlessly authentic, being more taking risks, drawing on courage to be yourself in relationships. This is, this is what changes the world. This is what helps cultivate a world that we all want on that, on that real heart level. So the gene key name for this is cosmic communion. And the shadow is called dominance. The gift is synergy and the city is communion. The shadow of dominance is based on this tendency to operate in hierarchy, which is how our world's built. And that is deeply tied to the loyalty to family and blood ties. And we originally found that in hunter gatherers, right? Where we needed to stay together for survival. This hierarchy is also currently now related to family systems. If we look at family systems theory, closed family systems have the individual working for the for the system and open family systems have the system working for the individual and this is very much like hierarchy where the people down here are supposed to be working for the people up here the people up here have more the people up here have less and that's very similar to a closed family system the individual doesn't have everything but the people who are kind of in charge of that family system, the uh, matriarch or patriarch at that time, has more or is more in control. And in open family systems, we really see the benefit of each person being an individual. And so this is where, which I'll get into in a minute, heterarchy. So we've got hierarchy, closed family systems, closed systems, heterarchy, open family systems, open systems. This dominance, the shadow of dominance presents itself in one of two ways or both ways goes back and forth. And we've got timid where the person will bow their head to authority, where their spirits are dominated by others and where they compromise their self-freedom. I know I can relate to having done that at some point. And then on the reactive side, we have what Richard Rudd calls pompous. And this is about, this is a reactive behavior and it's a, this obsession with climbing the hierarchical ladder and having power over others for wanting to be better. As we move into the gift, the gift of synergy, the root of that word, so if you look at an etymology dictionary, what I really like is etym, E-T-Y-M online.com and you type in synergy, the root word of that is working together. And this is where we move from a hierarchical structure to a heterarchical structure, which is more distributed horizontally as opposed to vertically. And this happens through a very natural process and is kind of self-organizing, which you witness in nature, right? Just because the trees are so big, the trees are not better than the mycelium because the mycelium is also doing a tremendous amount of work that both the trees and the soil benefit from. Heterarchy also works about instead of one or two or a government system um, giving approval the responsibility and decision making is distributed evenly and the true power lies in empowering each other to make the right decision for them, right? And I can already hear like the narrative of going, oh, well, we can't trust that person or that person or that person to make proper decisions for themselves. And I remember as a child, having issues with hearing that. I used to hear that sometimes and it never made sense to me. And I think I can see how this gift of synergy, when you can really look into nature, you see that the trees don't feel like they need to overcompensate or overfunction 
for the mycelium or the birds, they just do what they're doing and they trust the other parts of the natural environment to do what they're doing. And when we start stepping into this, diminish. And it's, it's also going to call us together more closely with our soul family, the people that we resonate with and have true understanding of and with, as opposed to feeling like you need to stay with your blood ties. On the city of this, the city of communion, um, Richard Rudd calls this the end of money. I am going through my own money journey right now, which has been with me since I've been in the womb. And it's quite, quite profound. And money is deeply tied to hierarchy in our system, deeply tied to guilt and shame, deeply tied to some having and some not having. And this is really, I think, where humans have really created that separation from the natural cycles of the earth. So the city of communion looks at us, looks at us as this collective body. Even if we have individual personalities and experiences, we are one. And when one suffers, we all suffer. And this is where I really have that determination and belief that if you are doing your work, if you are working through your own personal shadows, if you are having deeper compassion for yourself, if you are exhausted and healing from burnout and letting yourself heal, if you are taking a risk and doing something different that no one in your family has done before, you are paving the way to create this change as we move from these shadows to these gifts to these cities. Because your work, your courageous journey ripples out because we all are one. The, from the Fae, from my guides, the Fae, they say that the secrets, the lies, and repression are all what stimulate the shadows. So when we keep, when what they mean by this is the shame, right? Shame is secretive. Shame is lies that pushing back, don't talk about it, ignore it, that feeds the shadow. And this is why the Fae in the past have been so underappreciated because they display it all, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. The Fae see the beautiful in all of it and <clears throat> humans didn't like this. And so there was this withdrawing of the fairy energy on the planet and from what they've shared with me is they're ready to come back in because there's more acceptance of being able to see this now and they've asked me to talk more about this um, as they come more into uh, the consciousness of humanity again so I'm just checking out what they say here. The Fey would see right to the truth of one's soul. And this wouldn't win popularity contests because they also bend versions of the truth. And this is in itself a paradox because everything about the fairy our paradox. Um, but they are also, they kind of showed me this image of the, um, if you go into circus mirrors and they're all fractals and you look different, all of those fractals of us are truth. All of the fractals of the different mirrors where we see ourselves differently, those are all truth because we are all, all of these things. And they are never ending constant fractals of truth on this plane. And even as we increase the light in our bodies, even as we ascend, 
truth is going to shift constantly unless it's a universal truth, a cosmic truth. And this is what the fairy find really fun because those fractals of truth, they make life interesting here because there's always something more to discover and uncover. And hidden truths, the pushed away truths, are actually very different than the fractals of truth that we all encounter because those hidden truths are deliberately or unconsciously pushed aside from shame and fear. And so when you begin to accept all of the different fractals of self and other, all of the shadows and the lights and the and the the different ways people express themselves and that everybody and everything is always changing, that is where the wholeness of life comes together and true synergy occurs. I don't know if that made sense. Um, it's funny sometimes when that stuff comes through from my guides, I just trust it because it resonates in my cells. So I really appreciate you watching and listening and I hope you enjoyed this video and it was supportive to you. Have a beautiful day.